Hello everyone. I just want to answer some question that a follower asked me, okay, on my Facebook. And I know some of you guys might be wondering the same thing, okay? This is an upcoming spiritualist, okay? She asks, is it a must to have an altar before one can start summoning gods? The answer is no. But it's important to have an altar. At least if you cannot install the spirit, installation, to install a spirit, a spirit is, is an altar, a permanent altar. Okay? The normal altar that we are talking, that we, I talk about all the time is movable altar. Altars that can be moved from one location to the other. But when you install a spirit in any location, you cannot move it that, that often. It's best to have a permanent place, like the land is your own, the home is your own, and then you install the the spirits. Sometimes our ancestors, they install spirits under a tree or by the tree together. So when you are not able to install, to do installation of any gods, altar is simple. Altar can be done. You can create an altar to your wardrobe, <laughs> but you don't burn fire in that place. Otherwise, you burn down the house. But other things you can do, you know. Altar can be done in any quiet space that you have in your home. Quiet that people are not frequenting that place. Okay, you don't have to have a big room to yourself before you can do altar. You can create an altar from your living room, so from your sitting room, from any small space. You can even buy a small cupboard and put all the things that you you want in there. That anytime you want to pray, you just go in front of that cupboard and do your altar. For those people that 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 have small pl uh, place, you can go there to do your prayers. Altar. Hmm? I'm going to make another video call to show you guys examples of how you can become creative in creating your own altar if you don't have a big space. So no, you can. it's not important to have an altar before you can connect to God, but it's, it's extremely important to have as a spiritualist at least an altar where you always go and pray. It's not necessary. It's not, according to you, you said it's a must. It's not a must. If you want to connect to those powerful gods, hmm, you can go to their location. Like water, you go to the water to pray. Location of the gods of the water, you can go to the location. Air is with us all the time. Air is with us all the time. So if you want to connect to the oil god, I'm speaking, doing declaration. You can go out, outside. In your private place to speak to the air god you can use the calabash truck after chewing your your alligator pepper or just speaking to the air the air god is there hmm? yeah if you carry the staff of authority anywhere you are you can call upon the gods and they will come and answer you hmm? the fire gods even if you don't have an altar you can connect by going to the nature if you don't have privacy in your house you can use candle candle is easy so you can use that in your house, right? But if you don't, you can, if you don't have privacy, you can go outside to do your candle prayer. You're connecting to the air, the fire God through that candle light is the presence of God. But God will never reveal he, it's himself. The fire God will not reveal himself unless he wants to. But as he call upon the fire God, there are many other spirits in the fire dimension that will answer your prayer. How do you do the fire um, you want to if how do you connect to the fire god? How do you de do the offering? You can do it through the fire, and the best way is if you have wood. You know, like you put firewood, all those barbecue stuff that you used to do barbecue. You can pour your libation in that fire. You do your offering, put all your offering, your fruit, your fruits, your animal sacrifices in the fire, burnt offering, because the fire god lives in the third heaven, the sky up there. You know, even the air gods, the same way you can use the fire to give offering to the air gods. It's the aroma, the smell that they like. You understand? Yeah. So you can do that outside your home, in your compound, in a private place, even if you don't have an altar. After praying, you go, you go home. But one thing is, having an altar is important in a way that some spirits, they don't come immediately. When you call upon them, it might take two days, might take three days before they come. Or some spirit might take a few days before they come and answer, especially when you're just coming up. Mm? So having an altar, you have a specific private place that they can come 
and see your prayer request, see your requests and get it done. But if you don't have a private place, hmm, then the spirit will be all over the place. They don't have a private stable place. That's why we have an altar. No matter how little it is, no matter, even if you don't have a, a, a big place, you know, it's important to have an altar. But if you cannot be able to do it, when you're doing your prayers, you always tell your spirit that they should provide for you so that you can be able to create an altar for them. So you can have a, a stable place that the spirit can always come. And this stable place must be a quiet place, a place that is not busy and people are not always frequenting in that place. So if you don't have an altar, you want to pray to the water God, you go to the water. To the fire, I have told you, you go to the nature of great fire and do your offering, your your rituals there. Or you do candle, do candle prayer in your private home. In your privacy, you're connecting to the fire element. Hmm? Yeah, to the fire, after the earth, we are, you know, earth is with us everywhere. You can go outside to pray to the mother earth if you don't have an altar. Or you can take an, a stand from outside, pray with it inside. After praying with it, you, you go outside and pour it. Hmm? You're connecting to mother earth. But make sure you're giving your libation when you pour the sand after your prayer. You use, you use your red color, um, color not to pray and then when you go to to put this sand back in the nature you give offering to mother earth hmm? you can even make it more effective that before you take the sand you give offering and when you leave the sand again you give offering you're connecting to the gods the creator gods without having an offering and uh, without having an altar hmm? yeah that if you have an altar the sand will always be in your altar especially those sand that you brought from your Paternal side and your maternal side to connect to your ancestral spirits would always be in your altar. So which other god? Darkness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This darkness god, interesting god. When you're doing your night vigil, you're doing your night prayer, you're connecting to the darkness god. Mm -hmm. So if you want to connect to darkness god to disturb the, the work of or evil witches and wizards, darkness is the best time to do it in the midnight. So you do it, you wake up and do it. Darkness is there and everywhere when it's dark. The darkness God is there and the spirit that works with the darkness God is there. The darkness God is working together with the air. In fact, all the spirit works together with air. Sending the, delivering the message. And then the moon and the sun one, you know, when the moon is coming out, you go outside to do your prayers. Mm? Give your offering. Go to the nature. I think nature is the best way to do all this thing. Sun is with us all the time. If you don't have privacy, you go out to do your prayers in the sun. But to be a spiritualist, as a spiritualist, it's very important to have at least an altar. It's important. Mm? As a spiritualist, it's important. But when you don't have the possibility to do it, you can do it the other ways. With the intention of creating an altar later. So as they are blessing you, then you begin to prepare to create altar for your spirit. Your spirit God needs an altar. Your personal spirit God needs an altar. What about your ancestor? Your ancestor also needs an altar. Okay, but for the ancestral altar, please do not put a, a living human being image in the altar. Okay, in the ancestral altar. The picture you should have in your ancestral altar is those people in your family line that have died. That is the picture you should put there. You can put a prayer request there sometimes. If you're praying for something, you can put prayer requests in your ancestral altar. You can even put the image of the person which you want to pray, which you want the prayer for, in the ancestral altar. But it's temporary, not permanent. Once the prayer is, when once they answer the prayer, remove it there. Do not put a living human being with ancestors, because once they stay in that altar for a long time, their energy begins to connect with the dead. It makes people to live prematurely. You know in that ancestral altar, you can bring sand outside and put it in a bowl, put it in ancestral altar. After a few days, that sand in that altar will become like graveyard sand. So that means you're putting the person in a graveyard which leads to dead. You understand? People go to graveyard to collect graveyard sand, but you can get a graveyard sand through your ancestral altar also. Yeah, so anyway, so it's not... It's not a must to have an altar, but it's necessary to have as a spiritualist. But if you don't have it, there are many ways to go around connecting to these gods without an altar. But I will advise you to get an altar at least because altar is movable. Altar is not installation of spirit. It's something that you can be able to create with things around you. Okay.